Right? Sort of split this this way, right? Into four pieces. Then I have some arrows that kind of go that way. And I put some different things in here. And then I said this kind of affects this deal. And I put another box up here. How many of you guys would be really good at this? And I talked about how this was somewhat interactive and it could go this direction. Or it could go this direction. Now who could kind of tell me where we are and where we're going? What's the left hand side? What's this? Okay, these are the five C's, but what, what do the five C's? So we know that, that kind of gives us the give, the give on what, that they all start with C's. But what is this called in general? What's a more generic term? Market opportunity analysis, right? So this is an MOA. So we're doing a market opportunity analysis. So we're, in marketing, we're often trying to figure out, is there a market for a particular product or a particular offering or a service or some hybrid of goods and services, some experience, whatever it is that we want to sell, right? Whatever we as a firm want to sell. So uh, on this side, what, what, what do these two big circles represent? Okay, so the P's are here. So the P's are actually part of this internal part, right? This outer circle. And what's that outer circle called? The marketing mix, right? So that's the marketing mix. And what is a marketing mix? It represents everything I can change about the offering that I'm making to the customer themselves, right? Everything that I can change, everything I can possibly change. And the four P's are kind of designed essentially to simplify how do we think about all the things that we might change about the offering itself, right? So that's what the, the marketing mix is. So what's this middle box, the middle circle? Okay, so that's our target market, right? So we know that's a target market. So if I combine the target market with the marketing mix, what do those two in this course, what are we kind of using that to define? Marketing your marketing strategy, right? So what are your strategies? So this is the strategy side, right? So the marketing strategy is there. The marketing opportunity analysis is on that side. So we're trying to kind of bridge what are the opportunities to put together different marketing strategies, right? So what, what are these boxes in the center that kind of link those two together, the MOA and the marketing strategies? These squares. Okay, good. STP and D. So that's the way I remember them typically. STP, but I just have to remember that P goes over here, right? And D, right? So if I remember that, then I've kind of got STP and D. So what, is, what does STP and D stand for? Can we figure Okay, segmenting. Targeting, right? Differentiation. And positioning, right? So you know that's that's so that's sort of what we're using to link the market opportunities to the marketing strategy. So what are the what are the five C's then? Okay, customers. We st we always start with customers, right? Why do we like at least in the way we're thinking? We may not always start on the slide with customers, but we're, as marketers, we always think about customers first, right? So we're customer centric. Who are customers? Those those types of things, right? What do they value? What satisfies them? That's sort of how we start adding depth to the slide, right? What are the other C's? Okay, company. Competitors. Competitors. Collaborators. And context. Collaborators. And context. And what's our four letter acronym for context? Okay, PEST, right? So remember PEST, PEST stands for what? Technical. Very good. Okay, so that's so. That, so all we're trying to do with each one of these acronyms and other ideas are to add depth to the slide, so that instead of seeing this as two dimensions, we start seeing it as three. So, what are the four P's? What's uh, uh, more strategically instead of naming the four P's? What do the what do the four P's do for us? What do they do for us? They're a heuristic, right? We talked, about, I think, the first time about heuristics. And what is a heuristic? It's a simplification, right? So it's a, it's, a way of, it's a way for us to take something that's very complex and simplify it. So anytime we do some simplification of a very complex phenomenon, then some of the things are sort of left out in that. So the four P's are kind of 
a way to help us get at some of the things that we want to think about that's associated with the offering itself, right? So what are those P's then? Okay, price, product, place, and promotion. So why did I leave promotion last? What, just that time, was it just the order they came in? Or is that a strategic move on my part? That's your marketing professor. Most often forgotten. <laughs> Most often, you're, you're just joking with me now. <laughs> It's what most people think of when they think of marketing. But what am I trying to help, help you guys do? To think about it much broader, right? To see it in much more of a strategic way so that you can see kind of how does marketing kind of start with things other than promotion. So last week we had a case that was uh, really about the Tata Nano, right? So, that's, so we talked a lot in some ways about kind of the big picture. How do you take the slide? How do you apply it? Promotions was a part of that case. What role did promotions play in the Tata Nano case? Very little. Why? Minimize the price because it was very much kind of a price sensitive market. The, mar the consumer that they were going after, the target markets, were very sensitive to price. So, price was driving, was kind of the dominant decision making uh, criteria that was uh, driving the case. And promotions do what to price? They add cost, right? So, if you add cost, that, what, that raises your floor, right? The floor that you can ask for, your costs are higher. So, price uh, can actually be more dominant than promotion. So, marketing isn't always trying to get at what's the best promotion. But it's trying to figure out how all that works together. Uh, so uh, in, in promotions, we're often trying to figure out, you know, what is it we're trying to say to the customer? What's the positioning? What are the right ideas? What are the associations? All that sort of ties up into the whole branding idea. How do we brand different products? Those types of things. And so uh, how is Nano being branded? Car for the people. Car for the people. The what? Mm -hmm. Does anybody know what the term is for the Nano now? It's, it's actually called something. The case I think mentioned is. It's the one lot car, right? The one lot car. That's sort of its, so that's really sort of the essence of its positioning. It's what, and that's very much kind of driven by price then, right? So it's, it's it, you know, the whole idea is we want you to think about a car that you can afford. This is a car that kind of replaced the, the uh, four-seater or the, the four-seater motorcycle that you're riding. Uh, it's a, uh, a car that can replace the mopeds that you're on, those types of things, right? So that's kind of more the one lot car. So that's very much kind of the getting at the essence of its positioning. It's trying to say this is kind of what the car is all about, right? So seeing that and seeing which segments, right, who are the segments, what's the difference in targeting and target markets? We've talked some about the difference in positioning and differentiation, but we haven't talked much about what's the difference in targeting and target markets. What's the difference in positioning and differentiation first? I just sort of talked about positioning without Position defining it. Okay, very good. So positioning is how your customers view your product, right? So this is in the mind of the customer and the mind of the consumer. So when we think differentiation, what, am I, what are we typically talking about there? How it differs from the competitors. How, how it differs from the competitors. So we kind of got, so the, the key words I think is consumer's mind or customer, customer's mind on positioning. I think competitors, when I'm thinking differentiation, sometimes we need to differentiate within our own product line. So tonight we'll see some issues with differentiation that sort of are within the same company, right? How does the company differentiate between an animal blood substitute and a human blood substitute? So sometimes differentiation can be kind of within, uh, within a company, but typically you're thinking of competitors when you're thinking differentiation. Okay, so that, uh, that brings us, we've got positioning, we've got differentiation. So that brings me back to the question that's, so that's called a warm call, right? I kind of warmed that question up. So what's the difference between targeting and target markets? Okay, so uh, the target market itself is actually a segment, right, that you've already chosen, right? So you're kind of going through a process of saying, here are the different segments that are out there. Uh, targeting is kind of the decision-making process that's associated with which of those segments do, are we going to pick and then make target markets out of, right? So targeting is more kind of, a, it's more of an action verb that's about what we're, uh, uh, about that process of selecting which segments we're going to end up uh, uh, using as target markets and then forming marketing strategies to try to go after those different target markets. Okay, so uh, this, uh, what, and what's the segment again? See, so I'm sort of backing into the slide in different ways, right? What is the segment? 
Okay, so when I'm trying to break, when I'm doing all this stuff, I'm trying to break down markets into different components, right? And I want those markets broken down into these things that we call segments or clusters or groups, right? And what is it, how would we define those groups? If I have multiple groups, how do I define those? What makes them into a segment? Similarity, so they're homogenous within, right? The similarities within the group, they're homogenous within. And what else can we say about the segments when we compare across them? They have different Heterogeneous across, right? There's, there's something unique or something different about each one. So the segments are kind of different across. Homogenous within, heterogeneous across. So that's sort of the idea when we're doing a segmentation scheme. So the segmentation variables, that is the things we can segment on, can be a number of different things, right? They can be demographic things, they can be psychographic things, they can be uh, uh, um, all sorts of uh, different variables that allow us to kind of group different types of people into different markets, right? So they could be things like what, you know, what drives your need for blood? Is it a blood transfusion? You know, what, what drives your need for a blood transfusion? Is it a trauma case? What, you know, what, what are the types of trauma cases that drive that? Uh, is your need for blood more based on diabetics? Is it a chronic type of a case, right? So those, those you, you can see how you can form different segments uh, through a variety of different means. And so that's all you're trying to do with segments, is you're trying to kind of come up with some means of differentiating different groups uh, of prospective markets and decide which of those groups you're going to end up developing strategies around. All the best with your efforts to master marketing and sales. I'm Gary Hunter and I hope you have a great day.